Hi everybody, uh, my name is Lucas Kirk and I will be presenting on core weak deterioration. Uh, let's give me a second here and get this started. Mm -hmm. I'll just present the view. Well, here we go. Core weak deterioration. And before we talk about core weak deterioration, I want to go over like what are cores. Well, here we go. Corries are known as the rainforest of the sea because the warm weather and the diversity it has and it's identical to the rainforest on land and um, the coral reefs structure are actually made of calcium carbonate and um, each of the coral reefs like the, each individual one are called pulp I hope I'm pronouncing that right and the ideal conditions for the coral reefs to survive in well obviously warm water but it has to be shallow enough so they can receive enough sunlight. And um, it's no secret, the largest coral reef in the world is the Great Barrier Reef, which can be found off the coast of Australia. And now, we're going to talk about the destruction of coral reefs and what are causing the destruction of coral reefs. Uh, first images we can see the sewage being dumped into the water. Second image we can see fishing. Third image is you know, energy production giving off carbon dioxide and we have car giving off carbon monoxide or uh, other carbon gases and uh, they all play a big role in coral bleaching you know, the destruction of coral reefs alright now let's talk about the coral bleaching so the oceanographic conditions are always changing and the reef habitat are being affected by it and as a result we see coral bleaching Coral bleaching is where, well, first off, let's say carbon dioxide that are being given off by you know, cars and factories is being released in the air in mass volumes. And uh, we really don't think about the ocean and carbon dioxide. Well, ocean, they absorb so much of the carbon dioxide and it changes the temperature of the, you know, the water and all those results. The coral reefs you know, is called stress. They've been stressed by thermal stressing. And as when it happened, the coral will expel or push off the algae that are living in the corals. And it's very crucial for the corals to have algae living on them. And when it's being exposed, they are being exposed to the environment. You know, and as they've been exposed to the environment, you know, it causes coral bleaching. And this, that's it for coral bleaching. And I kind of want to talk about more on coastal living and effects on coral reefs. Well, the four causes are overfishing, sewage, trash, radioactive materials. Well, first off, more than half of the world's population live within 50 miles of the coastlines. If you do the math, seven no it's not seven sorry but 3.8 billion people in the world and that means a lot of, it has a large effect on the ocean and coral reefs like overfishing you know, to meet the demand and to feed their consumers their fish fishing are coming through and they are taking up all the fish that live in coral reefs therefore they're destructing the biodiversity and the nutrition that lives in the habitat and therefore they are being like starved or they're dying off of that and now sewage you know we don't really tend to think about sewage but in regions around big cities it's just as bad as global warming it's because you no know, the untreated sewage are being released and it has an excess of nutrition and the ocean is a competitive place no, there's a competition between seaweeds and coral reefs and with new excess nutrition the coral reefs not the coral reefs sorry it's the seaweeds that will take over therefore will be blocking the sunlight of the coral reefs down here and they will eventually die off and you know, like I said there's 3.8 billion people living within 50 miles of the coast where does all the trash go unfortunately it goes into the ocean and when they dump the trash in the ocean, you know, heavy objects are great, the coral reefs, or they just blanket it 
the blanket it over their coral reefs to a point where they can't get sunlight and uh, they're exposed to dangerous chemicals. And that's we have radioactive materials. Um, in countries that don't have strict regulations, they are dumping radioactive materials, and this has a direct impact on the coral reefs. And you know they die off, and you know, the effects they all have one thing in common, and that's the effects on you know, coral bleaching, coral reefs. Competing with each other, home to bacteria and bacteria and diseases. And so we have to find out with solutions. And people have been trying to fix this problem, but we can't fix it quick enough. But this is what we have so far. There are two guardian and seeding. But guardian has been around longer, and seeding is a more of a new concept that's been used. Let's talk about guardian. So garden is broken up in two parts. The newborns, basically where newborns are, are baby coral reefs. They will be nursed in a nursery to where they are grown to the right size. And also I have to mention that the newborns will be installed on tree like structures or a table. And scientists found out that the tables will be work better because the, the tree structure will fall over if there's like extreme weather conditions on the surface of water. So they put on tables. And once they're big enough, they start a process called transplantation of coral reef. And usually what they do, they would take it and they implant it onto a, a hard surface such as man-made structures or even like died off coral reef. And they're, they're eventually grow. And research has shown that there's only a 7% mortality rate, which is good. But a lot more, more scale effort has to be taking place to combat coral reef deterioration. Now we're going to talk about seeding. Seeding is a little bit more difficult. It's because it involves genetics. So what they do, they will take two coral reefs, usually different from each other, and they will reproduce them, and they will do it again, and again, and again, and again, with different coral reefs around the world. And what they do is, with this hat, with, okay. So what it does, it promotes genetic diversity, and they will have the genotypes that can combat you know, warmer waters or higher nutrition around the coral reef habitats. And so the process is basically, you know, nurseries, but they regrow their coral reefs, and once they're mature enough, they will put them out like guardian, they were put onto a hard surface like old coral reefs or man-made stretchers. And um, there have been some work done, only small scale. They've done it in the Caribbean and they saw very positive results and there are big plans are coming up in the next couple of years. Hopefully you know, it becomes fruitful. And, but however though, the biggest solution is us. What can we do as individual and as a community? Well, we need to reduce our carbon footprint. Climate change is one of the biggest contributors to the deterioration of coral reefs. So we need to cut back our carbon, drive less. Don't use the light as often. Just even small things can have an impact. We need to be at a sustainable level where the carbon dioxide will start leveling off and the ocean won't be absorbing, absorbing as much carbon dioxide affecting the coral reefs. Secondly, we have pollution. Pollution play a big role in the ocean. Now there's vast, vast areas of pollution. We need to get rid of that. We need to stop dumping them into the ocean and we need to come up with better recycling plants, better um, trash disposal, and, uh, or develop um, goods that can be degradable. And lastly, the most obvious is don't touch the coral reefs, especially when you go coral, I mean, sorry, not coral, scuba diving. You need to break them, like I said, they will be exposed to the environment, eventually killing off the coral. And that's all I have for today, and have a good night.